In this worked example, we are going to try and apply the signaling questions for domain one of ROB2, which covers bias arising from the randomization process, to a real trial. The trial we are going to use is the demo trial. This trial compared twice weekly aerobic strength or relaxation training for four months for the alleviation of mild to moderate depression. The aerobic and strength training arms were the intervention arms, with the relaxation arm acting as the control arm. Some of the outcomes of the trial were depressive symptoms, absence from work, cognitive function, and a range of physical outcomes. We've given the reference details for the trial, so you can find the paper if you're interested, but we are going to show relevant excerpts from the trial. So normally in ROB2, we would be um, uh, choosing a specific result to assess, but for this domain, because it's likely to be exactly the same for all, uh, all results or all um, outcome domains that you're interested in, we're not going to specify a particular result. We're just going to just look at the uh, randomization process for the trial. So just to remind you of the signaling questions for domain one, um, the first two questions asked directly about the two main processes, generating a truly random sequence and concealing the sequence until participants are irreversibly enrolled into the trial. The third question is asking whether there were substantial imbalances, clearly beyond that expected by chance, that provide evidence that the randomization process was problematic. Just to remind you, in most cases, the answer to this question will be no or probably no. So in this presentation, green underlined text to these signaling questions uh, represents good or low risk answers and um, red text, uh, bad or high risk answers. So we're going to begin with by focusing on the first two signaling questions, as the answers to these questions are often found together in trial reports. So we're going to look at whether the, we think that the allocation sequence was random and whether uh, we think that the allocation sequence was concealed into, until participants were enrolled and assigned to interventions. So here are the details regarding how randomization was performed in the demo trial. Um, this is what they write about the trial design. So this randomized parallel group observer blinded superiority trial was carried out at a single location at Copenhagen University Hospital in Denmark. If the patients were considered eligible for inclusion, they were referred to randomization and exercise testing. Patients were randomly assigned to strength aerobic or relaxation training. Randomization was centralized and stratified according to medicine status. One, not receiving antidepressant medication. Two, having received antidepressant medication for less than six weeks. Or three, having received antidepressant medication for more than six weeks. Demo trial staff contacted the Copenhagen trial unit, CTU, by phone. Randomization was carried out by the CTU using computerized restricted randomization with block size of six. The block size and thus the allocation sequence were unknown to the demo trial staff. So from this text, do you think that the allocation sequence was random? And do you think that the allocation sequence was concealed until participants were enrolled and assigned to intervention groups? Feel free to pause the recording at this point and take your time to consider your answers. So these are our suggested answers for the first two signaling questions. Our judgments are based mainly around um, this quote, that randomization was centralized and stratified according to medicine status. Um, demo trial staff contacted the Copenhagen trial unit CTU by phone. Uh, randomization was carried out by the CTU using computerized restricted randomization with a block size of six. The block size and thus the allocation sequence were unknown to the demo trial staff. From this, we are happy that the allocation sequence was random, it was computer generated, and that the allocation sequence was concealed. 
Randomization was centralized and trial staff had to contact the clinical trials unit by phone to find out allocation. So some of you might be concerned about the fact that the trial used a fixed block size within strata of six. And uh, combined with the fact that the intervention could not be blinded and therefore the allocation would have been known after patients were enrolled and assigned. But despite this, we think it's unlikely that the block size would have been reduced due to the fact that it, um, randomization occurred within strata. It was unknown to begin with. And as you will see on the following slides, the trial was quite small, so there wouldn't have been much time to be able to deduce the block size. But this, of course, is our judgment. So just to say that these are our suggested answers and you may legitimately disagree with the judgments we have made. And also to bear in mind that there probably isn't a, an important difference between yes and probably yes answers for, for this question or in other situations the no and probably no answers. We're now going to look at the third signaling question. We are going to examine the baseline characteristics table and consider whether baseline differences suggest a problem with the randomization process. Just to emphasize again, we are looking for substantial imbalances beyond that expected by chance that provide evidence that there was a problem with the randomization process. So here is an extract from the baseline characteristics table from the demo trial. In the actual paper, if you do go and download it, they have, a, I mean, this is about half the table. They were put on a lot more things. Um, so you can look at the um, full table if you wish, but it's not necessary for the purposes of this exercise. And uh, as, as we said at the beginning, this is a three arm trial. So we have a strength arm, an aerobic arm, and the control group, which is the relaxation arm. And you can probably see just, uh, just to begin with, like, uh, for many baseline characteristic tables, there are no p-values reported. And just to, to say that uh, it's not expected that review authors calculate p-values in order to answer the, um, the signaling question. We are looking for big substantial differences or many differences in baseline characteristics. If you do see big differences, you may want to calculate p-values to determine the likelihood that they are due to chance. But be aware that some of the baseline characteristics will be correlated. So if there's an imbalance in one of them, purely by chance, uh, you may see other correlated variables also showing imbalance. And this would still be compatible with chance. So feel free again to pause the recording and to take your time to consider whether you think that uh, baseline differences suggest a problem with the randomization process in this trial. So if, if we just have a quick look at this table, um, you may remember that randomization was stratified according to medicine status and the block size was six. So um, you can see that the groups are well balanced uh, for size. We have exactly the same size groups and for well balanced for medication use. So that suggests that um, those elements of um, randomization occurred correctly. Um, you may have also noticed and been possibly concerned by the fact that the um, one of the depression rating scales, this Ham D17 score or the 17 item Hamilton rating scale for depression was lower in the relaxation group. And the relaxation group also had a higher proportion of male participants. But did baseline differences suggest a problem with the randomization process? We don't think so. Although there are slight differences between the groups, these seem compatible with chance given that there are only 55 participants in each group and many variables were measured. Again, just to say that this is our, our judgment. So the next step is to use the answers of the, the signaling questions to come to a risk of bias judgment for the whole domain. So what I would like you to do to do now is to use the algorithm to come up with the overall risk of bias judgment for this domain um, according to the answers to the signaling questions that you came up with. 
once you've gone through that, um, just have a think about whether you're happy with the judgment suggested by the algorithm. And remember that the overall risk of bias for a result will be determined by the highest risk of bias for any domain. And that you can also override the algorithm if you think it is appropriate to do so. Again, if you want to pause the recording, um, you can do so now. So given our answers to the signaling questions, we have come to a low risk of bias judgment for this domain. Uh, the route taken uh, through the algorithm is depicted by the yellow arrows and is formed by the fact that we judge the allocation sequence to be adequately generated and concealed and uh, didn't have any concerns about the baseline imbalances. Your risk of bias rating will depend on how you answered the signaling questions. And just to repeat once again, this is a suggested answer. You may legitimately disagree with the judgments we have made. I hope that walking through this worked example has been helpful.